AGM, Family Island Division, Water and Sewer Corporation, come as he opens this up in prayer. Good morning, thank you very much. Hebrews 10 and 22 states, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Honorable Prime Minister, Ragged 
added and so on. We also put on works, Berry Islands, Moors Island, is ongoing, Sweden Sea, Rigel Island, and Aquins. These projects range from new water mains to upgrades of key operational valves to well field piping to refurbishment of well fields to upgrades of distribution systems to the installation of new piping pumping stations and new RO plants, etc. Today, the corporation is presently executing a Caribbean Development Bank water supply improvement project funded by a $28.33 million loan from the bank and a $13.3 million uh, counterpart funding from the government of the Bahamas. This project included two projects in the province and projects on six different family islands, including Cat Island. Works are now complete in the Providence, Pinewood Gardens, Phase B, and Coral Lakes, and Boatswain Hill, as well as in Salvador. We've also completed or achieved substantial completion in South Andes. We will be commissioning South Andes in short course. Crooked Island, which we will commission next year, and Long Island Lots 1 and 2, South Long Island, Central and South Long Island, and Lots 3 and 4 in North. Today is your day, Cat Island. Oh, Cat Island! It is the people's time, and yes, it's also Cat Island's time. When I visited Cat Island in 2018, I saw people toting water. Others were lined up at the standpipes and the community tanks filling containers on their trucks. I was shocked to discover that no part of Cat Island had pipe water supply. The Christmas is coming early for you, Cat Island. The Minister's administration made a commitment to you, and today we are here to deliver upon our commitment. Our word is our bond. This will be the first ever installation of water mains on the entire island. It is anticipated that the completion of these works will spark a boost of the economic outlook and population on this island. So, Cat Island, we're coming into your neck of the woods to lay 780,000 inches of pipe that is 65,000 feet. And it's anticipated that these works, once completed, will spark your, or turn around your economic outlook and spark a population growth on the island. These works will replace a long-standing tankering operation where a single truck is required to attend to residences throughout Cat Island to deliver water. This will also result in Cat Islanders no longer having to carry water by hand or tote water on their heads. Relative to truck water, for many years, delivery challenges arose during hurricanes and poor weather due to road blockages and or the road being completely washed away. The days of lining up at the nine standpipes on Cat Island and pumping water from the pipes into jugs, buckets, and large containers will soon be gone. The proposed works on Cat Island will be undertaken in two lots and will incorporate approximately 12 miles of pipe installation as follows. In lot number one, 350 feet of six inch pipe. 10,400 feet of 4 inch pipe, 6,100 feet of 2 inch pipe. This will result in 115 service connections. The areas to be supplied with water mains and lot number one and portable water for the first time by the government include Wilson Bay and Bennett Harbor settlements. Lot number two, 3,500 feet of 6 inch pipe. 32,500 feet of 4 inch pipe, 9,500 feet of 2 inch pipe, and this will result in 175 service connections. The areas to be supplied in lot number two with portable water for the first time by the government includes the new bike settlement, proceeding south to the settlements of Dowds, Morristown, and ending in the old bike settlement. It should be noted that both areas will be fed via two newly constructed reverse osmosis plants, one in each area, that is Bennett's Harbor in 
the north, dogs in the south. The construction of these plants will be executed under a separate contract. I want to especially recognize staff member, Mr. Nori Newbold. Mr. Newbold has for many years executed a one-man operation for Cat Island. I've, been also, I've also been advised that the completion of these works should not exceed 12 months. The value of this phase of works is $3,143,978.50. The entire Bahamas has and will continue to be affected by climate change and global events. I'm not just referring to the damage that could be caused by hurricanes, as was most recently experienced by Hurricane Dorian and Abaco in Grand Bahama, but also recent events such as the COVID-19 pandemic and related occurrences that impact us fiscally. In all of these occurrences, however, quality water supply for all of our citizens remains our central priority. In Cat Island in particular, all residents at present, as I observed earlier, currently obtain water from private wells, rainwater, Stand pipes or water tanked for public wells, which are subject to changing weather patterns, drought, or seawater infiltration, resulting in interrupted water supply or poor water quality, especially salty water. It is also very expensive to put in private systems, or on the flip side, purchase tanked water, which, and we all know that water is a human right. And so, the purpose of this project is to provide you a safe sustainable and reliable supply of portable water at the standard World Health Organization. This water will come directly into your homes on demand at any time via an underground pipe water system. Given that we are in the hurricane zone, our engineers have taken care to design the proposed water systems so that they are robust and adaptable to climate change. Detailed studies have been undertaken to identify all of the areas that, that would be underwater if a storm of high intensity hit Cat Island. In areas where the roadway is susceptible to being washed away, the pipe would be buried with an additional foot of coverage. In other words, it would be buried at a depth of four feet rather than the usual three feet in other locations. Concrete anchors will also be used to properly secure pipes when deemed necessary. The location of the water production centers, that is the Oro sites, which will also include supply wells, Oro plants, storage tanks, and pumping stations, was selected to meet the requirements of climate change, adaptation, and mitigation. So these facilities will be located at sites that are elevated. So if God forbid, Cat Island is impacted by a hurricane like Dorian, these sites will be unaffected by flooding or by seawater intrusion. The water supply will not be interrupted for long, if at all. And so this has been a long time coming to Cat Island, and I'm excited to be here today to sign such a monumental contract. I want to commend Island Site Development Company for the work that they have done in South Andres and anticipate a stellar performance in Cat Island, lots number one and two. And I encourage ISD or also hire locals as much as possible. In an effort to clarify any misnomers or misconceptions, let me outline the process by which contracts are awarded under the CDB loan agreement. The request for proposal, that is an RFP, is published in local newspapers and available on the CDB website. Interested firms then come to the corporation and purchase the tender package and submit secret bids water and sewage cooperation upon the tender process being closed. Once all bids are received, they are opened by the water and sewage cooperation's internal control and compliance department in the presence of the independent engineering consultants, that is N.O. White and Associates from Jamaica. The record of the bid opening is forwarded to all bidders and to the Caribbean Development Bank. The bids are then evaluated by the independent engineering consultants in Jamaica and then subsequently by the CDB in Barbados before WSE can proceed to award a contract. As with all projects, the process is transparent 
conducted by independent bodies and under close scrutiny to ensure fair procedure. So as I conclude, I want to recognize General White and Associates of Jamaica for their exemplary oversight as engineering services consultants. I want to thank the Caribbean Development Bank for their continued support to the Water Source Corporation. I want to thank the hardworking staff of the corporation, especially the Project Management Unit and the Family Island Unit. Let me also thank the Most Honorable Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister for their unwavering support of the Water and Sewage Corporation, which has allowed us to be able to take on many of these projects and have the success that we have been having. I want to assure all residents of the Family Islands that we are doing everything in our power to ensure a safe and reliable water supply for residents. Lastly, let me also thank the members of the press for coming here today and helping to spread the good news of this infrastructure and development on Cat Island. I also have the task of introducing a man for whom I have great respect and high regard. A man who has vision for the infrastructure and who has the task of executing the Prime Minister's vision for the infrastructure and development throughout the country. So I want you all to stand and welcome Mr. Infrastructure, our Deputy Prime Minister, the Minister of Works, and the Member of the
to hear that the modern search operation is going to NASA. What happened in some areas in Dorian, and we are going to ensure the facilities throughout the country are built in that experience of mind. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, the government is challenged with a limited capital raise budget. The capital the corporation has sought as best they can to be able to meet the needs that they have in Cat Island. They're not going to be able to meet all of the needs now. But they're going to make history today by beginning something what to happen in Cat Island many years ago. This Minutes Administration is going to ensure that the job is finished to get out of Chairman indicated how the scope of works is going to be developed. We have 12 miles of pipe insulation, 290 service connections, the most populated areas. But I promise you, just as we promised the people in Long Island last week, not leaving Cat Island, and everyone in Cat Island is able to have one in one. <laughs> so while this first phase is only 12 months, we prepare to see pipe running in Cat Island for a long, long period of time. I understand that the works is up $3 million investment in Cat Island, a little over $3 million, as I've indicated. Start. Very, very good place. It's my honor now, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce a man who's been making history throughout our islands. As I indicated to you, he's made history in Long Island last week. He's making history in Cat Island today. In January, we're going to make history in Spanish Wells. In February, we're going to make history in Andros. Every single island in this country is going to continue to make history because it cares about the family islands and the people in all of our islands. Please rise right to welcome our Prime Minister, the Honourable Dewey. Very skilled at that. And it was 
process the scrub water on the white clothes were boiled in the, in the yard after which they were hung out. But I would have a long story to tell you about, but it's not the appropriate time. But I basically pointing out that I'm certain that residents here in Canada Island would have experienced the same thing. And now those days, like it had ended for me, will be ending for them. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good morning. It is my great pleasure to be here with you as we mark this historic milestone in the development of Cat Island. I acknowledge the presence of Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister, also Minister of Public Works, Executive Chairman of Water and Sewage, Stephen Gibson, whom I think has been doing an outstanding job for Water and Sewage. And other board members who are assisting him and his work could not be as great as it is without the support both the executive team and the board members, so I thank you all. I also want to recognize the chief council and other members of the district council, religious, business and civic leaders, and the management staff of corporation, all have joined us today. And um, it's also my pleasure to recognize Larry Cartwright, who is a council general in New York, who has flown here to add his support to not only Cat Islanders, but his support to the chairman also. So ladies and gentlemen, as you all are so acutely aware, our entire planet is presently facing the worst pandemic in almost a century. And here in the Bahamas and internationally, our way of life has been significantly altered and we have had to adapt. This is a challenge of epic proportions to all of the world. However, as we draw closer to the celebrations of the birth of Jesus Christ, there is a growing hope that by the grace of the Almighty God, next year will mark a new beginning for us all. Thankfully, the tough decisions and comprehensive actions we took confront COVID-19 has left us in a much better place for Christmas than most of the countries around the world. I want to again thank and to applaud the majority of Bahamians who in Cat Island who adopted and remained disciplined in the public health guidelines. I want to say to Cat Island just that your discipline and the government's efforts saved lives and prevented illnesses. which is allowing us to reopen our country. In the world, there are about 1.65 million individuals who have died as a result of this COVID virus. And it is because of our discipline, we have been able to keep that number down. And uh, I hope that that number stands now at 164 will not rise. So ladies and gentlemen, as the Prime Minister, I am extremely focused on the necessity for critical infrastructure for all of our residents and business of our shores. This includes good roads, the consistent supply of electricity, proper telecommunications, modern airports, docks, and other facilities. We also need good essential services such as health care, schools and national security services, such as policing, immigration control, and the defense of our borders from threats like poaching and illegal immigrants. One area that is critical for everyday life is portable work, which every home and business require for functioning and thriving. Access to water is a fundamental right for human beings. We all appreciate the importance of having high quality portable water piped into our homes and businesses. And today, therefore, is a 
day of celebration, people, here in Carolina. Today is a tremendous landmark in your history. And today is true. We are gathered to witness the signing of a contract for the provision of the initial stages of piped potable water for the first time in the history of Cat Island. I want to repeat that. For the first time in Cat Island's history, potable water is being Sadly, this is a matter which was neglected by some who had the ability to do some who had the ability to do more for you, but had failed to do so. But that is the past. We are in the present, and we are moving to the future. To use a well-known quote, the past is now water, not part of the water, but water under the bridge. <laughs> like everyone is looking to your future. A good portable water will be flowing into your homes, your businesses, and public facilities like your clinics and your schools. We are fighting for the future of Canada. We are fighting for the future of our entire Bahamas. I am challenging the Minister of Works and the Executive Chairman to immediately commence the process of developing a strategic plan including a financial plan for the installation of piped portable water to each and every home in Cat Island within the shortest possible time. As Prime Minister and as someone deeply committed to our family islands, I am extending this challenge as we are approaching 50 years of independence. We must set a national goal to complete the delivery of this most essential service to all of our residents throughout our family of islands, which are critical for the economic development and growth of our Bahamas. As we plan and fight for our future, we will announce a timeline and date for the completion of the provisions of piped water to all communities in our beautiful archipelago. So ladies and gentlemen, your government is cognizant that without these basic utilities, there can be no sustainable growth and development in our family of islands. The provision of essential infrastructure will allow us to better and promote and encourage the development of additional behemoth-owned businesses and tourism facilities. We encourage the development of small, environmentally friendly boutique hotels, owned fish lodges, and other small quality resorts through marketing and promotional support. We also ensure that family island airports and docks are modernized to facilitate these linkages. And will also help the growth agriculture, help to promote the growth in agriculture, fisheries, and manufacturing. We also encourage diversification, growing agricultural produce among the family islands and hands in the island trade transport. We will continue to bolster health facilities and education, including in this internet age, access to telemedicine and online education. We will continue to advance telemedicine, especially here in Cat Island, so that we can minimize you being transported by air ambulance to New Providence or any other destination. Rather, you can remain here in your shores while the doctor in New Providence, USA, or wherever will be able to examine you without you having to move or try to be transported via any air ambulance. Students on islands like Cat Island should have online access to teachers and learning on smart devices. That is what your future and the Bahamas' future will look like. Let us fight together for this future 
for ourselves, our children, and for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, as we look to new beginnings in 2020, I am certain that this project will mark a new beginning for the health and wealth of Canada. And to help enhance that wealth, remember that the government has a policy that we would like individuals to enter small hotel development, bed and breakfast, etc. The government will provide the land for you and incentivize you with allowing all materials for such, in, for such development to be duty free. I promise God Island this that today this is only the beginning. I look forward to returning in the near future for other positive new beginnings for Cat Island. There is much more to come for Cat Island. My philosophy of government is very clear. Every Bahamian and every part of the Bahamas deserves by right access to the same opportunities, services, and infrastructure. We must move away from believing that the Bahamas is not solved. Bahamians deserve a better future. This is the kind of Bahamas we are fighting for. So dear brothers and sisters, you have had plenty of endurance. You have waited for many years for this day. The future it is here, and it can only get there. Let me thank all those involved. I will be closely following the progress of this project. So ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare for new beginnings, I extend my best wishes to all of you and your families. For a most enjoyable Christmas, of course, keeping in mind the public health guidelines. And it is my fervent prayer that Almighty God will extend his blessings on our nation for 2021. I thank you very much. May God continue to bless each and every one. Ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly remain seated as we arrange for the contract signing.
gentlemen.